Phoenix had a half-court offense of rating of 91.9 last night in the loss to the Los Angeles Clippers, which really entails the struggles that they had to find sustainability attacking against their defense. They vary in coverages consistently. Uh, sometimes they switch, sometimes they don't, and they do a lot of little things over the course of a game to help them stagnate the attack of an opposing team. And the Suns succumbed to that uh, last night in a few different instances. However, there was a stretch at the end of the second quarter where they did find success and they were able to continuously just nail on manipulating the advantages. And they did so via manipulating switches in the pick and roll. And they did so even more so specifically from the middle third of the floor and then using Aiden's roll gravity, whether it was for a direct pass to him, for him to connect or for him to score but also for Chris Paul to get free in the mid-range. And sometimes he would drag two with them and hit Aiden on the roll, or he would just drag two and then kick it out or hit a midi for himself. Uh, so they just had a few different ways they went about finding success going against this vaunted Clippers defense, especially when that team is healthy. And I just wanted to kind of zoom in on some of the things that happened in that stretch of the game. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, this first play here we're going to see Chris Paul coming down court and pick and roll. Again, he's in the middle third of the floor. They're starting to play in the middle third this time. And you see them in stack formation with Devin Booker behind Zubat, ready to set a screen. And they end up just going with their with their snap action. And we're going to see Chris, as we see Paul George, step up off of Devin Booker again in the stack action. They're trying to switch it all. So because they're trying to switch it all, which is the most effective way to guard against this action. The fact that Terrence Mann is going over the screen immediately puts him out of position. So Paul George is peeling off of him to take over on CP3. And now they have the dominoes fall under the defense, putting them in rotation, running it from the middle third of the floor to negate any of the ice or weak actions that the defensive tactics that the Los Angeles Clippers like to use and keeping and funneling actions toward the sideline and then even more so to the sideline and towards the baseline. So keeping it in the middle third of the floor allows for the Suns to more effectively navigate and pick and roll. And that's what we're seeing here. And they manipulate the switches and now they've got the defensive dominoes falling. And then we see a Koji with a very crafty Attacking of a closeout, making that closeout be Zubac based off of the ball movement, the timely ball movement, and then him being able to get to the basket and finish with a crafty Euro step. And we're going to run it back one more time so that we can just see exactly what happened. So we got Chris coming off the pick. He sees two automatically, and Zubac is now dropped all the way down to almost near the restricted area. So Chris gets off it quick as he sees two with man going over and Paul George peeling off of Devin Booker. So now Morris Sr. has to go from being low to – stepping up and taking over for Paul George. Now Paul George has not rotated back, end up having to switch this again. And now we're going to see Zubak now Matt tasked with the masked man. And <laughs> Josh Okoji, he's able to attack the closeout, and then he finishes. All right, and on the next one here, we're going to see more stack action. This time they're going to kind of go after they, after they see a heavy denial in the away action initially on Okoji. They end up going into... Stack formation again, as you see a Koji looping through, Chris comes off. This time, he's going to heavily attack and get a corner of the paint to engage Zubak. And as he does so, we also see a tag on the roll from a Koji's man, Morris Sr. And we also see from the weak side, Kawhi Leonard peeled all the way in to help as well. All of this activity in the paint, and Chris kicks it back out. And now they have the switch that they wanted, but it starts with CP3 attacking hard in the paint and engaging Zubak out of his drop, forcing the late switch. The late switch is forced. This man has to go over to DeAndre Aiden on the roll. And now Chris is allowing for Koji with a better angle to pass it into the post. And Kawhi Leonard having to be one, one pass away with his help responsibility, opening up the passing lane and avenue for Koji to feed Aiden. He then ends up seeing two as they try to kick out switch Terrence Mann from this post mismatch. And Aiden does a good job kicking it back out to CP3, playing connector off of a connecting pass from Okoji. And now again, they have the defensive dominoes falling as the Clippers now have to execute an X out off of the kick out switch. And the Suns are able to beat it. They get a decent look. Terrence Jones, Terrence, <laughs> excuse me, misses. And it's okay, though, because it's a good shot and the process that they want is there. That was one of the first shots that Terrence Ross actually missed last night. 
All right, the next play here, we're going to see them go with their 77 action. So they're going about it in a different manner to get to the same positioning on the floor into that middle third. So they go with the 77. Aiden is the second screener. So they get the first screener out the way just to get a switch with Torrey Craig. And then the second one is more senior. Aiden does a good job flipping the angle to allow for Chris Paul to get downhill. Again, in the middle third of the floor, Chris is able to attack the top foot of Zubat. Again, in the middle third of the floor, he strings it out. Allows for Aiden just buying him time. That's all he's doing is buying Aiden time to get into his role. He gets to the front, to the top of the restricted area, gets the timely pass from CP3, and he knocks that down. All right, the next one here we're going to see. This one is in semi-transition here. It's going to be a drag screen, but again, look at where it's taking place. In the middle third of the floor, and also let's look at the space. And no one's at the free throw line extended on the side that Chris is coming off to. They got a Koji buried down in a corner, well below the break. So as we see Chris coming off of the drag, he's got more than enough space to drag and then also get to that mesh point in the switch to force it to be a late switch, but also at the mesh point to get into, a court, of course, his office in that mid-range, right around the free throw line. He's able to knock that down in rhythm. All right, this next one's going to start in the outer third, but look at where it's going to finish. Chris gets a low angle pick and roll. It's almost like logo pick and roll here. And guess what? A great screen and separation provided from Aiden off the screen gets Chris into the middle third of the floor, and he's able to engage Zubat. That forces a late switch, and then now look at what we got here. We got, while that's happening, Nicholas Batum, who's guarding Terrence Ross here at the bottom of the screen in the bottom right corner. Batum is also trying to help to tag, if need be, if Chris tries to throw this pass over the top in a mismatch. He sees that. With Batum off balance, and you can see his inside foot is in the paint to try to help take away the angle on that inside pass over the top. Chris reads that quickly, as well as Terrence Ross. Shakes up from the corner some, and now he's able to hit Ross on a timely pass, and now he's able to attack a closeout. Now they're playing within an advantage off of a paint touch. Playing in paint to great, as Monty Williams likes to speak on. And then Ross does a good job navigating hand help, nail help from Zubat, and he's able to finish that floater. And now again, we're going to see them again in semi-transition here. Another drag screen. Aiden flips the angle, able to force the over. Chris Paul again is now in the middle third of the floor again. He's attacking and engaging Zubat. He ends up actually seeing two here. They don't necessarily concede the late switch as quickly as they have in reps from, from the past. And Chris feels that he has two, so he's able to hit Aiden before attack and get over to him. Aiden actually misses this, unfortunately, but again, the premise is there, the process is there, and you see the the percentage of look that they're generating. Now, again, we're going to see this time, usually they were going to their away action here, seeing an away screen or their wide action or wide action or away, either one you want to say. For Devin Booker, Chris points him off, though, however, and he's pointing him off because if he shift our focus to underneath the basket here, look at the matchups. So we got Zubac on Josh Okoji, which is something that Tyron Luce sprinkled in subtly and seldomly, but he did it in a few different instances, ATO and then things of that nature, to kind of stagnate the flow of any type of action that the Suns were trying to run out of pick and roll. I mentioned that they were going pick and roll heavy, especially for this portion of the game, and now we're going to see one of the reasons why they put Zubac on Okogi because Okogi is not necessarily a non-shooter, especially the way he's shooting of late, but they're okay with that because any pick and roll that they want to, that the Suns want to run is going to be automatically a switch. So the Suns see that, they go with their, they flip it from their wide action, and then they end up going with spread pick and roll out of stack position, and again, from the middle third of the floor, they get the switch here, and guess what? Because they put Zubac on Josh Okoji, that means that Morris Sr. and Terrence Mann are switching this, and guess what? That means that no screen is needed for DeAndre Aiden out of stack because he already has a mismatch, which that, with it being Chris Paul's original man and Terrence Mann on him. Aiden does a good job on the catch and going up quickly before they can kick out switch or give any extra help, and he's able to knock that down. And on this last rep here, we're going to see the Suns again flow into out of their elbow, out of their elbow action and alignment going into stack positioning again. Chris Paul gets the, sw gets the switch here on the late switch, engages Zubak again by attacking that elbow, and then Akogi, instead of popping up this time, he clears out to the strong corner, and that's going to allow for a space for Aiden again as Chris Paul puts pressure on the elbow, gets a corner to the elbow, allows for 
DeAndre Aiden to get into his role, just buying time for him, and he's able to catch it in the post and go up quick. That was a great job in terms of executing within the process and finding an advantage that they can consistently manipulate with the switching that was going on and with the matchup uh, manipulation going on from Tyron Lewin company as well.